Welcome to the Copper Spice YouTube channel and thanks for joining us. In this video, we are going to explain why choosing the right memory model was so significant. C++ Memory Model We recently saw a comment on Twitter asking if someone could explain the C++ Memory Model. Challenge accepted. We thought to ourselves, how difficult could this be? Just look up a few papers, share the details, and say a few words about the model. Since most models are simply an abstraction and not very interesting, it will be a short talk. It turns out this subject is neither dull nor mundane. The choices and considerations for a memory model are complicated and cannot be made in a hurry. There are trade-offs and all the details matter. As we started to research memory models, we found most tutorials jump right in and talk about multi-threading and assume the model is already present and works as expected. Too often, they forget you need a memory model before you can reason about threading or atomics. The group of people who ushered in the C++ memory model started by looking at the Java memory model as a possible solution. In this talk, we will highlight what they discovered and how the C++ memory model was developed. At a basic level, the idea of a memory model is to describe how threads should interact with shared data. If you are writing a single threaded program, keep in mind it still has a main thread. This type of program does not have shared data, so the memory model does not provide any benefit. For a multi-threaded program, there must be an agreed-upon protocol for accessing shared memory, or you have chaos. Modern-day computers and mobile devices have multiple cores, which means that two different threads reading shared memory at the same time might actually see different values. This is normal, even if it seems odd. Requiring all threads to stay perfectly in sync all the time is very costly and destroys performance. If you are writing a multi-threaded program, you will need to decide when shared memory inconsistencies are acceptable and when they are not. One of the purposes of the memory model is to give developers a way to write code that ensures shared memory is in sync when it is necessary. When talking about a memory model, we need to distinguish between three different components. The program a developer wrote, the code the compiler generates, which is executed by the hardware, and the memory operations the CPU performs while it is executing the code. When we write programs, statements are put in a certain order, which makes sense in order to solve the given problem. To improve performance, the compiler really wants to translate your program into executable code which does the operations in a more efficient order. The end result is supposed to be the same, and hopefully it will. Likewise, the processor or the memory bus may reorder memory access for efficiency. This might be done by batching together a group of small write operations into one larger unit. The role of the memory model is to place restrictions on these reorderings, so the programmer is able to reason through the likely behavior of a multi-threaded program. The model must define when it is legal for multiple threads to access the same memory location simultaneously. It must also describe when the changes made by one thread become visible in other threads. Before C++11 was released, the focus of the standard was only on the behavior of single-threaded applications. There was no memory model in the language. As multi-core systems became more affordable, the lack of multi-threaded support turned into a critical issue. It was decided that a memory model should be added to the language, so they started looking at Java. The Java memory model was developed in the mid-90s, 
and it was present in the very first official release of the Java language. This made Java the first widely used programming language to define and support a memory model. The goal of the Java memory model was to ensure multiple threads could execute and access memory safely. For Java, untrusted code and trusted code run in the same virtual machine and share memory. The language must guarantee untrusted threads cannot violate type safety or have operations which would compromise the integrity of another thread. The working group decided to also look at the pthreads library in the POSIX standard, since it was the most commonly used threading library. The implementation of pthreads assumes the programmer would never create a data race. As a quick reminder, a data race exists when two conflicting operations can be executed simultaneously. According to POSIX, if the programmer causes a data race, the program is invalid. The performance of software which used pthreads was generally faster than Java, since pthreads had more relaxed rules. On the other hand, POSIX was not very precise, and it didn't define a memory model, so it was difficult to determine if a multi-threaded program was actually correct. When the working group looked at the Java memory model in 2006, they initially intended to adopt it as part of the C++ standard. As they looked a bit deeper, it became clear this model would not be a good fit. The goal of the Java memory model does not address the needs of the C++ language, which has never had type safety as its single highest priority. The cost of guaranteeing a consistent ordering for every single memory access does not make sense with the basic philosophy of the C++ core language. As an example, for some data types, the Java memory model requires that every single read of any variable anywhere in memory must be done atomically. On most platforms, this requires an additional CPU instruction, an extra overhead on the memory bus to ensure the memory model is respected. This cost would have been unacceptable to most C++ programmers. The Java runtime must ensure that when a pointer value is read from memory, all of the memory that it points to has been fully written and synchronized. So every time an object is constructed in Java, extra instructions and memory operations are required. Adopting their memory model would have a significant impact on object instantiation in C++. It was decided not to use the Java memory model and instead create a new memory model as a hybrid of the best ideas from Java and the experiences of using pthreads in POSIX. We found information confirming they knew this approach was a risk. However, they believed it was the right choice. One of the main concerns in 2006 was threading libraries like pthreads were not guaranteed to work. It was discovered that without cooperation, between the programmer, compiler, and the threading library, there was no way to guarantee the original intent of the programmer was respected at runtime. This is the cooperation defined by a memory model. One of the goals of the standard committee is to change the core language only when necessary. They prefer to add universal functionality to the standard library and leave everything else for third-party libraries. It was determined that multi-threading could not be implemented correctly as a third-party library without a memory model in the core language. It was also decided support for threads should be added to the C++ standard library for optimal performance. As a result, developers often confuse the memory model 
and the Threading Library since they were developed and released together in C++11. The memory model is not a visible or accessible part of the C++ language. The compiler designers are required to respect the memory model so all multi-threaded applications access shared memory correctly, even when code is optimized or reordered. In order to show the evolution, we put together a timeline with the major milestones leading up to the addition of the memory model. The initial paper which started everything was published at the end of 2004, and it included examples about why a library solution for threading in C++ was not possible. This title is slightly misleading. What the paper really shows is that in order for compiler optimization to be possible in a multi-threading application, a memory model must exist in the core language. The following year, a group came together to work on a definition for a memory model. They explored the properties the model would need in order to create a correct and high-performance threading library, which could then be added to the standard library. Just two years later, in 2007, the proposed memory model was accepted into the draft document, and the memory model has remained largely unchanged to the present day. At that same meeting in Kona, one of the first library features providing atomic access to shared data was also accepted. Less than six months later, the main multi-threading library proposal was accepted, and the basic functionality of the threading library we have today became part of the C++ standard. At the end of 2008, the draft standard was finally feature complete, and the committee started the long process of ISO approval. It took three full years to finish all the details, clean up the wording, and then address the national body comments. Formal approval for C++11 was finally granted in August. It is stunning that the memory model was added to the working draft standard, and yet it was not officially part of the language for four years. In C++17, the memory model was updated to state when a thread could execute. The P number we have listed in the third column is the paper defining what was changed in the standard. In C++20, the memory model was revised again, and atomic smart pointers were added. This new proposal made a number of changes to the original wording, cleaned up some corner cases, and adjusted the rules slightly to better fit modern CPU architectures. The overall fundamentals of the memory model were not significantly changed by these recent revisions. Users of the language waited a very long time for a new standard to be approved. For almost four years, developers knew the threading library, atomics, and thread local storage were waiting for them. We often talk about R-value references, move semantics, lambda expressions, and smart pointers as the real great things added to C++11. It was 13 years from C++98 to C++11, and many left and gave up. For those developers who wanted real threading support, this release was a dream come true. The C++ memory model, being part of the core language, made all the difference and changed how compilers can implement optimizations. We found some old comments online from developers who thought the new memory model would destroy the language. Other developers who had left C++ decided to come back. The release of C++11 was an exciting time to be a C++ developer, and everyone changed the way they wrote code as a result of the new functionality. Thankfully, the standard is now updated on a regular basis, so we don't have to wait so long for new features. 
even though not everything has been added to the language for threading support, like executors, it is clear the standard committee is moving in the right direction. From our research, it is also clear that adding an effective memory model may have been one of the best decisions for the continued evolution of the language. This talk was an introduction to the C++ memory model and just the beginning. And now that we have a foundation, we want to continue the discussion and compare the C++ threading library to threading in POSIX. There is also more to say about the power of atomics, how to specify memory reordering, and the cost of a mutex. We look forward to presenting the next part of this series and showing some examples. All of this will illustrate why the components of multi-threading depend on each other and why it is so complicated. For more information about CopperSpice, please visit our website at www.copperspice.com. Thanks for watching. We hope you found the content of value. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave a comment on this video or send us an email. Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and come back in a few weeks for our next video.